Well, that was a counter, so there's no, no screen tonight, so. I'm gonna try to turn it off. That's okay. Um, so I think, I think I'm talking to the people of the city of Northampton. Hello, people of the city of Northampton. Uh, my name is Ryan O'Donnell. Uh, this is the October, oh my gosh. The Halloween episode of <laughs> the Northampton City Council. I don't know if you heard that reverb at home, but. Sounds like God. Well. In the, in the context of the city council, I don't know. Um, no, it's just uh, us, us mortals, and we're here um, for October third, two thousand nineteen. Uh, these proceedings are being audio and video recorded, and let me ask first for public comment. Um, actually, there are two signed up, and after I go through this list, I'll ask if anyone else would like to. So the first person is Penny Geis. Miss Geis, if you'd come, and the floor is yours. I'm here to say thank you. You have already voted the first time and you're about to approve, finally, the electricity <laughs> aggregation project. There are many important things you do in the course of being on the council, but I think this is the very most important thing of your city council career. This has the potential to making a real concrete impact on climate change and helping the city be resilient as those weather changes come to us. So whatever else you are proud of, I hope you add this to your list of bragging rights. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Geis. Um, Sharon Moulton, please. <coughs> I'm Sharon Moulton from 48 Evergreen Road. Um, number 313, and I've been in, was involved in what she was just talking about, and I'm proud to come from Northampton where I can say that significant things have been done in since I've retired and devoted my life to the climate emergency, but I, it, it, I was really upset to read a good news on how much is being done with a list of seven states that in 2019 have passed significant climate energy um, protection legislation. But as all of you are well aware, Massachusetts isn't on that list and we need to stand up together and get it on the list. I was just talking with the mayor about his helping getting the influence of MMA and I am asking you um, as municipal leaders to sign the um, municipal leader support for Jen Benson's bill uh, H2810, which puts the price on carbon pollution in the transportation sector and the home sector and the manufacturing sector. And that if a transportation climate initiative multi-state thing ever happens, it's already accounted <coughs> for. So I'm asking you not only to sign it, and I think Ryan's going to make sure that you have it in your email to sign, but I'm asking you that if you know, I'm sure you all have friends and colleagues in places other than Northampton, and I would wish that you would forward the letter, you know, and urge them to sign also. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moulton. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on any subject? <clears throat> and I'm leaving because I have to get on a national group with you all. You know, I usually stay. Okay. But I've got to be home to get on a call at eight. That's okay. You got to do what you got to do. Thank you for coming. And no one else would like to give public comment? Um, then we will convene the council. And I'll ask for a roll call, please. Councilor Bidwell. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. And Councilor Shara. Here. All right, we have a quorum, so we're convened. Any announcements from councilors on any subject? Councilor Dwight and Councilor Nash. Um, in my regular update of the Charter Review Committee, the, um, most importantly, there will be a, a meeting, a special meeting at the Jackson Street School Gymnasium, it turns out, um, at 6.30 on the 29th. And we are going to, at that meeting, we are 
giving us a, a sort of a, a an expanded summary and discussion about uh, actions that we've taken and recommendations that we're prepared to make and as we as we work towards our final report. The also the opportunity to hear from hopefully from people we haven't heard from before. Um, Insofar, it's, it's important to emphasize that this is a mandatory review that's built into the charter, but at the same time, charter modifications can be made anytime, basically, or can be <coughs> appealed for, <laughs> petitioned for. So if any other new items come up that, and particularly significant items that might bear more discussion, it's, it's not a done deal if they're not included in this uh, petition that we're about to present. Um, there will be time for that. So the idea is to get to remind the community that there's an opportunity to weigh in on these topics and topics that they think are, are, are germane to a, essentially our municipal constitution. So um, hope folks can come to that uh, and, and participate. In the process, we've, um, and so I'm gonna ask uh, the co-chair to back me up a little bit because my memory is a little flawed, <laughs> faulty, but um, the uh, one of the items that we were talking about is one that I referred to the last time we had a discussion uh, about um, trying to, there was a requ request from two residents, uh, uh, Fred Zimnock and former Councilor Maria Tomasco, um, and then Fred Zimnock appeared at the last meeting to um, repeat his call and appeal for some type of annual report that and and I okay Sam Sam will correct me if when I'm wrong um, a summation of the year's report sort of digesting um, the statistical analysis that that's available to us online but to make a to condense it and interpret it in a book form so that uh, could be available to citizens um, who might not otherwise be able to uh, uh, access through the internet and other other means. Um, and ask that we put that language in the charter. As you can see, me struggling with it, we decided that we wouldn't because we couldn't really craft the language that would actually address, I think, the concerns that he expressed. We are required by state law to have an annual report. Every community is. Um, Ours is, comes in the form of the budget. He wanted, so essentially he wanted more granular detail and uh, narrative from the department heads. Um, so what we decided was instead to um, re refer the essence of the debate to this council and the mayor and, you know, put our minds to how we, how we approach this actually challenging issue of, of transparency and um, providing access. I mean, tra you can have transparency, but it's more like invisibility if the public can't access it. So uh, everyone agreed that that was the laudable and, and universal goal. It was just <coughs> no one could agree as to how we <coughs> do it optimally. Anyway, so that, that will not be included in the charter. Um, the, what else am I missing, Sam? What else did we talk about? The, all oh, right, and the um, which, uh, one of the one of the changes that will be seen is uh, um, the audit is basically the charter review committee is recommending three year contract periods. Um, there was discussed as to uh, you know that we should change make it part of the charter that we should change auditors on three year cycles, but. That was that was not included. It's just that after make the three year contracts and then after three years put out a bid, but at the same time it doesn't require you to change auditors to that mm -hmm. for for a number of reasons. Not the least of which is the last time we put out a bid, we only had two bids, and that basically forces your hand to choose possibly an inferior uh, contractor so or a vendor. So that that's a bit of a concern. But three-year contracts give, uh, it makes, you can get a more holistic perspective from the auditor as, as well as you don't have to, uh, there, we don't, the, the auditor and the city, do, they don't have to suffer anyone's learning curve over the course of one, each year to year, so. 
Um, what else, Sam? Am I forgetting anything else? That's it. Okay, so that was our crackling conversation. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Councilor Nash, you had something. Yes, um, so I'd like to report out to my colleagues here on the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction um, that um, we were working on a very tight schedule. Um, we are due to submit a report to you by November 10th. Um, uh, so just some details, we've met four times. Um, that uh, the first few meetings uh, were dealing with organizational matters, selecting officers. We selected Adele Franks as our chair, uh, Cynthia Suopis, did I say Suopis, that? yes, uh, as our vice chair, and she's also taking our minutes, which uh, we're all very grateful for. Uh, we reviewed open meeting law. Uh, when you're starting a select committee from scratch, there's a lot of detail work at first. It's not like sending something out to one of our committees, and Charter Review is probably familiar with this. Uh, so we reviewed open meeting law. Um, we uh, met with the mayor and discussed how we would do our outreach with different city departments, and um, the mayor's office has been uh, uh, working with us uh, and um, we the last our last two meetings we um, we heard from various departments in the city and um, it was actually pretty fascinating stuff um, there's a lot of different things going on with uh, pesticide use and um, and um, and, I'll, and some good news to report there um, I'm not going to report it at this time because we still need to uh, go through it and evaluate it um, that um, so next up for us we uh, we're well we are meeting on Monday at 10 o'clock where we're go going to be going over the uh, the scope of our report and you know how we're going to tie all the ends up within uh, basically a month um, we are also going to have two public forums uh, one is on Wednesday October 16th it's from 7 to 9 p.m. That'll be here in the hearing room, uh, over in the hearing room across the parking lot. And then on Monday, October 21st, from 10 to 12, here in council chambers, uh, we're coming up with two different so times because some people can make evening meetings and, um, and other people days are better. Uh, these are also, they're being posted as council meetings, so you are all welcome to attend. Um, and I think that's what I've got for right now. We look forward to having any of you uh, attend either of those meetings or both. And uh, thank you. Great. And it should be noted, not just uh, a select committee, but the council's first select committee. So right. thank you to both councils for navigating <coughs> Can I add the one stuff. Our nickname done. is Skipper. W Excuse me? Skipper, select committee on pesticide reduction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Really sorry you did that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to ask for your resignation. <laughs> but Lisa, you can stay. I like you. Uh, all right. So, any other updates? That's cute. No other updates? <laughs> That's adorable. All right. Acronyms. <laughs> um, <coughs> Mr. Mayor, do you have any, anything to share with us? <laughs> I did, uh, well, actually. Oh, go ahead. Come on, Skipper. What do you, what do you got? I oh. just want to um, slightly correct something Councillor Dwight said, which, which is just that there is a state law requirement that towns produce a, an annual report. Towns, um, before town meeting every year, actually create oh. a report. Uh -huh. and so, but there is not a similar. It doesn't apply to. For cities, yeah. Those are usually, but yeah, there's not a town report requirement. So anyway, just FYI. Well, that's, some cities that's do, you know, state of the um, city addresses, and they do other types of things. I don't believe there is a town. There's a report. And it's certainly, address. and that's not required under state law. Yes. But under state law, a budget is certainly required in the, in the exactly in yeah. a budget narrative. No doubt about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, thank you. So hearing no other updates this evening, I uh, will move to the consent agenda, which oh, Councilor Nash. 
Excuse me? Did we have the... Those were the announcements. You just well, I've just been like rolling them all in. Like, <laughs> That's okay, sorry. Jim. <laughs> so any one-minute announcements or three-minute up? I don't know. Who wants to say something? Councillor Nash, say more. Say something else. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, two things. Yesterday was International Walk to School Day, and uh, that um, to uh, celebrate a number of city officials were met together at the lumber yard and uh, accompanied the walking school bus to mm -hmm. Bridge Street School, uh, where the Bridge, D Bridge Street PTO had snacks and uh, breakfast bars uh, waiting for us. Uh, Mayor Narkowitz joined us, Chief Casper, uh, Sam Hopper from Senator Comerford's office, uh, Superintendent Provost, Councilor Shera, and School Committee Rep uh, Howard Moore. I wanted to mention them here because at the event, it was mostly us and a bunch of school kids. It made no sense introducing ourselves and recognizing <laughs> ourselves to a bunch of young kids. And so I wanted to do that. Here. And um, just uh, I, I wanted to add that we have, uh, there are now two walking school bus routes at Bridge Street School, yeah. uh, each with about 10 children each. And um, so we're serving 20 kids. We are still looking for some drivers. It's a great way to volunteer. You show up at, you know, 810, 20 minutes later you're done, you're downtown, near downtown, and you can walk and get some coffee and head home and you can feel good about the day. So uh, anybody interested, uh, go to the Bridge Street School uh, website and you can uh, and look for the walking school bus page. I have one other. Uh, okay. Okay, on Monday at seven o'clock, uh, uh, this Monday, October 7th at 7 p.m., um, myself and Andrew Crystal with O'Connell Development Group are sponsoring an informational forum related to a development project for the St. John Cantius Church. The meeting will be in the uh, parish, uh, parish hall. Um, the bathrooms aren't working, so I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> but the lights aren't working, there are chairs, and it'll be an opportunity for people to come in and um, hear from uh, Mr. Crystal about his project. And um, I, I, I'll just say off the top of my head, it, it has to do with uh, 23 um, uh, townhomes. Um, there are no plans to uh, tear down the church at this time. And, it, um, and there are plans in the future of developing something in the, the parking lot across the street. Um, they hope to preserve the church, but churches are hard to uh, repurpose. So, thank you. Great, thank you very much. A um, lot, lot going on, actually. So, any other events or things to announce? All right, um, thank you. So now we're gonna go uh, to the consent agenda, which contains the minutes of September 19th, 2019. Anyone want to pull that off for discussion or anything or amendment? Okay. Uh, move, move, please. Okay, second. second. So, uh, motion to approve the consent agenda is on the floor. There's no debate. All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? So that is approved. Uh, next is 19.147, a warrant for November 5th, 2019 municipal election. So, I'm just going to read this into the record in the City Council October 1st 2019 upon the recommendations of City Clerk Pamela L. Powers. This is again a warrant regarding the municipal elections scheduled for November 5th 2019. Uh, a meeting of the inhabitants of the City of Northampton qualified to vote will be held on Tuesday November 5th 2019 in the several polling places designated for the purpose by the City Council as follows. Uh, Ward 1 Precinct A and B are both in Jackson Street School Auditorium. This is where you vote. Ward 2 uh, precinct A and B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School um, gym Gymnasium. Ward 3A, B, and Ward 4A and B are both voting in the Senior Center, the Great Room, 67 Con Street. Ward 5A, Florence Civic and Business Building, 90 Park Street. Ward 5B in Smith Vocational Agricultural High School Gymnasium. Ward 6A and B in Robert K. Finn Ryan Road School, Ward 7A in uh, John F. Kennedy Middle School Community Room, and Ward 7B in Leeds School Gymnasium Lower Level. The polls will be open at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and close at 8 o'clock in the evening of the said day, and all such voters will within the said hours in the wards in which they are individually entitled to vote 
give in their votes for city clerk uh, for the two ensuing uh, municipal years, for two councilors at large for the two ensuing municipal years, for one councilor from each of the seven wards of the city for the two ensuing municipal years, and for two members of the school committee at large for two years uh, from the first Monday of January 2020 for one school committee member and uh, for one school committee member from each of the seven wards of the city for two years uh, from the first Monday of January 20 of January 2020. Okay. Also for three superintendents of Smith's Agricultural School to serve for two years again from the first Monday of January 2020 for one elector under the Oliver Smith will for two years from the first um, <clears throat> from the first Wednesday of May 2020. Uh, for three trustees under the will of Charles E. Forbes for four years from the first Monday of January 2020, and for two community, two members of the Community Preservation Committee at large for four years from the first Monday of January 2020. Move approve. Move to approve. Okay. May and second. Any discussion or questions? Did I mangle or misstate any of that? Okay. Pretty clear, straightforward. Okay. We're having an election on November 5th. Um, so, if there's no discussion, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labard? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. And Councillor Shara? Yes. Suspend the rule. Second. I hear a motion to suspend the rules. We'll have two meetings tonight, and here it's seconded by Councillor Klein. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of suspending the rules, please say aye. Aye. Those any abstentions, rules suspended. Is there a motion on second reading? So moved. Second. Okay. So made by Councilor Dwight, seconded by Councilor Carney for approval and second reading. Any discussion on second reading? Hearing none, uh, let's have a roll call, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. And Councilor Carney. <coughs> yes. Okay, so that is approved. Um, and now we will uh, recess for the Finance Committee. Thank you. Or would you call our roll for finance, please? Councillor Murphy. Here. Um, Councillor Carney. Present. Okay. Councillor Labar. Present. And Councillor Shara. Here. Thank you. Um, first, we have uh, approval of our minutes from September 19th, 2019. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second. Any questions about the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and we have a couple of orders tonight. Um, the first is 19145. It's upon the recommendation of the mayor, authorize surplusing 593 Elm Street and leasing it for child advocacy purposes. Order that, whereas the Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School Board of Trustees has custody and control of a certain improved parcel located at 593 Elm Street, which is currently leased to the Northwestern Ch Children's Advocacy Project. Uh, the lease expires on December 31st, 2019, and whereas. Um, on September 17, 2019, the Smith Vocational High School Board of Trustees voted unanimously to surplus a five-year leasehold interest in the building, and whereas Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30B, Section 16 requires the approval of the City Council for disposition of any interest in real estate, and whereas Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40, Section 3 requires approval of the City Council for, for the lease of a school building, not in actual school, school use. Now, therefore, it be resolved the mayor is authorized to enter into a five-year lease for 593 Elm Street running from January 1, 2020 to December 31, 2025 for child advocacy purposes and to execute all documents reasonably necessary to carry out this order. The Smith Vocational High School Board of Trustees shall sign the lease agreement to confirm its approval of the terms uh, thereof. Uh, we have a motion? So motion. Second. Um, and the mayor is here to talk about it if you have questions. Um, I, th I think the order is fairly self-explanatory, but um, some of you may be familiar with the Children's Advocacy um, Center and the good work they do in the community. They're, they have been located in this um, Smith Vogue property, and um, the lease is coming up for renewal, and so um, we need to go through this um, surplusing of the leasehold interest in order to um, renew the lease. So. Um, the board obviously had to do its surplus vote, and um, because the underlying property is it's a city school, region, uh, local school district, the 
City Council in Mayor also have to approve it. So mm -hmm. I'm seeking your approval of the surplus. And this is essentially a continuation of the same tenants that are in the building. That is same uh, purpose, correct. same everything. Hence the, um, hence the shall be used for child advocacy purposes. Mm -hmm. And um, any questions from anyone on this one? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation from finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, the next is 19146. It's an order to authorize payment of prior year bills. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that the council authorizes the payment of $18,842.59 of prior fiscal year bills. That would be from FY19. Um, copiers, uh, this is a June 2019 invoice. It was right at the end of the fiscal year for $199. Ford of Northampton, uh, a May invoice from 2019 for $68.59. Uh, Kalevich Associates, uh, February and March 19 invoices for $1,925. And the Nicoli Law Group, May and June invoices for $16,650. Do we have a motion in finance? Motion. Second? Second. And question <coughs> for the mayor on, on what these are all about. Again, these are um, bills that um, came close to the end of the fiscal year and um, either because we did not receive them in time by the close of June 30th or there, in some cases there was a bill sent to the wrong agency, it, it didn't get paid on time. So we're basically asking to be able to pay these bills and it does require a vote of the city council if it's outside of the fiscal year in which the funds were um, expended. So leverages for appraisals of property probably that is correct. We're going to surplus. Yes. Nicoli, was that labor? Nikolai Law Firm is actually the firm that we are using um, in the uh, public construction um, matter that I've Perfect. spoken with you in mm -hmm. um, executive session mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. um, so they're a firm that specializes in uh, public construction related uh, legal issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, any any other questions for the mayor? Hearing none, then all in, recommend, all, um, in favor of positive recommendation finance, please say aye. 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 Oops. <coughs> and then the last one is 19148, in order to authorize borrowing $1.5 million for paving projects. Order that whereas the sum of $1,500,000 is appropriated to pay the costs of roadway engineering design and construction, including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto, and that to meet such appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow such amount under Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Subsection 7, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city therefore, and that the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out this project. Any premium received by the city uh, for the sale of the bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of insurance for such bonds or notes shall be applied to the payment of the cost approved by this vote in accordance with chapter 44, section 20 of the general laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. So um, you may recall that last year um, we came to you at the end of the calendar year um, seeking uh, what I described as sort of an early bond authorization for pavement for projects that were that we're um, planning for the next year. Um, at that time, uh, we were, um, Burns Pit Road was the big project that had been identified. Um, and one of the things we wanted to try to do was to, rather than waiting until March uh, to do that bond authorization, but to try to get the authorization early so we could get the bid documents done and get them out on the street over the winter time. Um, and we, it ended up, we got much, better pricing than we had anticipated, not unsurprisingly, um, because many of the contractors are trying to plan their work over the winter time. Um, and if you go to them in April or May or June, they've already got a lot of work, and so you're not going to get as competitive a prices. So um, some of you may know that we've been trying to knock off um, some of the larger roadways um, that have had some serious uh, repair issues this year. Um, Obviously, we focused on uh, Glendale Road, Burt's Pit Road, Spring Street. Uh, just finished Upper Chesterfield Road, which I've been hearing a lot of good comments about, uh, Cross Street. Um, so we did a lot of, uh, I think, almost five miles of uh, paving. And these are like serious, long roads that carry a lot of traffic. Um, 
the one roadway, uh, long roadway that um, that we weren't able to address uh, this year, uh, but we did begin survey work on uh, because we really couldn't fit it into our budget, um, was uh, drumroll, uh, Councillor Klein, uh, <laughs> North Farms North Road. Farms Road. Uh, uh, that's one that uh, has also been on our, our list for quite a while. Um, and so what we want to do is get um, get North Farms Road, all the bid documents ready, and put that out to bid early, because we know that's going to be um, you know, a big one, where it would be North Farms Road and then the section of North Maple Street all the way to Bridge uh, Road, so sort of that whole section there, um, which is, again, close to about a two-and-a-half-mile uh, stretch of roadway that takes you right to the to the Williamsburg line. So, um, so this is not the this is not the only project we're doing, which is sort of what I told you back when we asked for this initial authorization. We will be um, obviously working on um, developing what our what our full plan is, um, but some of it will be dictated by what the bidding comes back in for North Farms Road, which is sort of how how we um, developed um, <laughs> the Glendale. I mean the Burt's Pit Road project. So that's what I'm asking you for. We're not actually going to borrow it immediately, but we can't sign a contract or do any of the procurement unless we have an authorization. Um, so that's why we're we're seeking it early again this year so that we can um, get this one out on the street and and see what we can do for pricing. So uh, any questions on? I think everybody that's had a road done in their ward knows how much people appreciate that. So when it's done. Not necessarily when it's anything. done, they're happy. <laughs> yeah. When it's done, they're happy. Um, then, without any questions, uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And uh, knowing of no new business, a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, so let's go through these. These are financial orders. Uh, first, 19145, in order to authorize surplusing 593 Elm Street and leasing for child advocacy purposes. A motion for Move approval? For approval, please. Second. Okay, man, second. Any further discussion on this one? Um, hearing none, have a roll call on this, please. <coughs> Councillor Klein? Uh, yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shera? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. And Councillor Dwight? Yes. Yeah, it's approved in first reading. Next, 19146, in order to authorize payment of prior year bills. Motion on this, please. Move to approve, please. Second. Seconded by Council Barsh. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, let's have a roll call. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. And Councillor Klein? Yes. Okay, it's proven first reading as well. Um, 19148, in order to authorize borrowing 1.5 million for paving projects. Move <coughs> to approve. Second. Okay, made and seconded. Any discussion on this? Um, quick question, it doesn't influence my vote in the affirmative on this, but North Farms Road was a subject of traffic calming requests, I recall, in the uh, Transportation Parking Commission. A road in disrepair is natural traffic calming. Um, so one of those things people want two things at once they want their road fixed and they want reasonable traffic actually both are very reasonable requests but my my question is in the, just out of curiosity in the TPC has there been any um, discussion about specific things you might do because if you're going to be working on the road then's the time now's the time to to work that into your plans I'm just curious if that's been discussed in the DPW or the TPC. Uh, in particular with North Farms yeah uh, there hasn't been I mean, there we did discuss the um, uh, we've discussed that traffic calming application uh, probably about a year or so back, mm -hmm. and that um, and that it was um, that the idea that any traffic calming um, measures would happen at the rebuild, mm -hmm. so that you know um, line striping, narrowing, the whatever it is that DPW is going to recommend, it's going to happen at the time of the rebuild. So, um, and now that this is happening, right. it, it would probably be a good discussion to have at the TPC. Okay. So stay tuned for the details on that because it's just the bond authorization. Oh, Councillor Klein. There's also a process um, underway to designate it as a wildlife uh, crossing yeah. corridor and um, that would entail, I think, working, I'm not sure if it's the state or the feds, but that would um, allow the state to lower or encourage the state to lower the 
um, the speed limit. So there, there is a lot going on around traffic calming for the road. Got it. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for indulging me in that question. Any other discussion generally on the borrowing? Uh, hearing none, let's have a roll call on this financial order. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. And Councillor Lamar? Yes. Approved on first reading. Uh, we have three financial orders on second reading. First, 19130, an order to increase energy and sustainability revolving fund threshold from 150 to $250,000. Okay, any discussion on this? Good. And when we're ready, let's uh, have a roll call. Are we on um, 19130? I think so. Or did I jump over something? That's no. We didn't so approve on. prior year bills, did we? We did. We did. We did. Yeah, we did. We should be at 19.130. Oh, that's the one. We are on yep. Yeah. So, who, um, Very good. There's a, I'm hearing a request. <laughs> I, I would move suspension of rules on order 19.148. Oh, okay. We'll do that after because we're technically out of order because we're, we're on one. No, we can go back. It's okay. Yeah. 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 But I'm um, annoying, so, you know, living up to my character. Uh, 19130 is what we're on. Uh, who may, who's the maker of the motion on that one? Councilor. And the second there. Uh, Councilor Klein. And so we got the motion. Okay. Any discussion on 130? All right, so let's have a roll call, second reading on that one. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Carney? <coughs> yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. And Councillor Murphy? Yes. Okay, so I heard from Councillor Dwight a motion uh, to suspend the rules for item uh, <laughs> previous item. 19146. Thank you. Second. Okay, and seconded by. Somebody? Councilor? Second. Everybody? Everybody. <laughs> uh, so any discussion on the suspension of rules to allow for two readings? Um, hearing none, all those in favor of spending rules say aye. 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 Those any abstentions? So. Move uh, second reading, please. Uh, Councilor Dwight moves to approve on second reading 19146. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that order in order to authorize payment of prior year bills? Um, let's have a roll call. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. And Councillor Nash? Yes. Okay, approved in second reading. Next, we got uh, back up to 1933. It's an order for fiscal year 2020 budget transfer, second reading. To approve. Okay. Second. By Councillor Barr, second by Councillor Dwight. Any discussion on the second reading of this financial order? Hearing none, roll call. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. And Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Passed on second reading. Um, next, 19.135, <coughs> in order to spend parking fees on certain days. Mo approved. Made by Councillor second. Barr, seconded by Councillor Klein. Is that right? Uh, any discussion on this in second reading? You have several orders here which you could vote against and be very unpopular among your constituents, mm -hmm. road paving and suspending yeah, that's <laughs> free parking. You know, so. so I'm happy to support this. Okay. Um, so we got the motion. No more discussion, right? Okay, so have a roll call, please. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor <coughs> Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. And Councillor Shara? Yes. Okay, that's approved on second reading. Um, also on second reading, 19138, in order to authorize community choice aggregation to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. To approve. Okay, made and seconded. Any further comments or discussion on this order? Had substantial discussion last time, so we're all set, sounds like. All right, um, I'd ask for a roll call, please. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor O'Donnell? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. And Councillor Carney? Yes. Okay, next is uh, the matter of a vote to authorize City Services Committee to hold s uh, street layout public hearings for North Street and Finn Street. So um, let me ask, do I hear a motion to have the City Council authorize the Committee on City Services to hold 
uh, a street layout, or two uh, street layout public hearings for North Street and Finn Street. Will someone make that motion? So moved. Second. Seconded. Okay. Um, so the 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 state statute that we operate under for going through the process about street petitions um, authorizes the city council to designate a committee to be the place where the required hearings happen, and I suggest this for the agenda. I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Councilor Carney, the chair of city services, was good enough to uh, say that it was, this is okay for her committee. Um, it's a little more nimble for four councilors to do this. If four councilors have to go and actually look at Finn Street and North Street, um, they, it's, it's easier for them to do that. Potentially, you could have more than one hearing if someone objects, although I don't necessarily uh, um, think that's going to happen. Um, and they will hold the hearing uh, as scheduled by the, the chair. Um, the process would then be that something still has to come back to the full city council if, if we do proceed to lay out the ways. So it doesn't, it's gonna, the process stays within the full city council, but a committee holds the hearing. I thought this would be a good committee also because it's a DPW kind of related jurisdiction, but also its chair is the council from Ward 1, so that's Finn Street, and I guess part of North Street on one side. Is that right, where the um, gym is? And then Ward 3 is North Street, and also the TPC chair. So it seems like a good place to hold this hearing. Um, any questions or comments? No? Cool. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> what? Way to go. Add a boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> to vote on that, though. Does that well, really? I don't know. The law says a duly authorized committee. So I thought we would just duly authorize it for fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and um, even more fun, we'll vote on it twice because our rules say we, we do. So, all right, so it's on the floor. Any more discussion? Hearing none, we can do the voice vote. All those in favor of duly authorizing this committee for that purpose say aye. 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 Oppose the abstentions. Do I hear a motion to spend rules, please? So moved. Uh, made, what? Made and seconded. Made and seconded. Very good. Yeah. Councilor uh, Sherrod, Councilor Dwight, any discussion, suspension of rules? Hearing none, all those in favor of spending rules, please say aye. 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 Oppose aye. the abstentions. Do I hear a uh, second reading on the second same motion? Reading, please. Okay, and seconded by Councilor Shara. Any discussion this time around? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? <coughs> all right, now, uh, thank you very much, and thank you again to the chair for taking that on. Uh, ordinances which have not yet been referred, they all upon the recommendation of the Transportation Pardon Commission. Move as a, uh, motion to move as a group to uh, legislative matters. Okay. Uh, so that means 19140, an ordinance relative to parking on Arnold Avenue. 141, an ordinance relative to parking on Belmont Avenue. 142, an ordinance relative to parking on Elm Street. 143, an ordinance relative to parking on West Street. And 144, an ordinance relative to a to stop sign on Hampton Avenue. Um, motion to refer all those as a group of matters was made by Councilor Klein. It was seconded Second. by Councilor Dwight. All right, so as a group on the question of referral, and I think it's in order if anyone wishes to ask questions about the content of these, because as you know, it's my practice that we should actually know what we're referring. So um, any, well, you know, how about this? Can the, can you, can the chair of TPC yeah, give the world's fastest of overview of what these actually are so the public knows? So uh, the one, two, three, four, the first four have to do with parking changes on public ways around uh, in and around Smith College, okay. public property, uh, and that uh, the TPC uh, kept these at, um, uh, at the TPC for an additional meeting so that we could do public outreach um, with Smith College. So a lot of it, we've done that work and we're handing it off to legislative matters with uh, that done. And <laughs> um, the last one has to do with a installing a uh, stop sign on Hampton Avenue. It was installed during the rebuild and it needs to be um, codified in city ordinance. So it, it exists, the stop sign is there. Okay. It's there and we're gonna make it real. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, that, that's actually much appreciated to get that overview. Any other uh, questions or comments? We're still in referral, uh, so the motion's on the floor. Um, we can do the voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, any abstentions? <coughs> so those are all referred. And now, um, zoning ordinances, which has not, not yet been referred. Um, so let's see. 19149, an ordinance to rezone 37 parcels from GI to OI and portions of two parcels from GI to FFR. So everyone obviously knows what that means. Um, but 
Maybe not. So the process note here is Master Law Chapter 48. Well, that's just the law about referring to the planning board, right? Okay, so I won't read that. Um, so we are going to, uh, all right. So let's see. I'd like a motion to refer this to legislative matters in the planning board, please. So moved. To get us started. So made by Councilor Dwight, seconded by Councilor Barge. Any questions on this thing? I mean, it's going to come back to us. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll Councilor Dwight. Uh, just for the record, Farms, Forests, and Rivers. Right. FFR, mm -hmm. that's the new classification and zoning. The okay. That's what the FFR stands for. The acronyms drive me crazy too. So it's a, and I and I think it's unfair to the public when we start when we start speaking. Not that I'm sure they're riveted now, but I don't want to <laughs> compound the problem by confusing people. But and it's always with zoning. We have mm -hmm. you know the zoning's all reduced to just acronyms, and we. Yeah, it, and, and I, you know, I didn't know what FFR was. I just looked it up. That's why. So same thing. I think it, to your point about we should know who we're referring. Right. I think well, it's thank, that's helpful. Yeah. yeah. And also, so <coughs> Councillor Murphy, you had yeah. something. So. Um, yeah, because I was looking at them. These are pieces of land along East Hampton Road, from the diverted river over to the East Hampton line. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So some of them. I'm assuming the ones that are going to Farm Forest and Rivers are on the <coughs> Audubon side of the road, right. and then the other ones are just going, like we did in Leeds, we went from from General Industrial in Leeds to Office Industrial, would be the same change here. Okay. That's actually perfect, and the entirety of what I think we should communicate is kind of what we're talking about and, and where. So between the, all of us, we sort of did that. Thank you. Um, great. All right, so we have this on the floor for referral, do we? Yes. Very good. Any discussion on the referral further? Okay. All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed, any abstentions? So it's referred. We have three ordinances on second reading. Uh, first, 19102, an ordinance relative to parking on Glendale Road. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Made and second. Any discussion in addition to what we had last time? Okay. Uh, Is so there a question you had asked about this last time that I didn't get back to about? Um, no, you, I mean, mine was just an open question as to whether the abutters and the, and the people on the street were notified about the changes in the parking. Um, and I actually don't know. We don't know. Anything else? Any, we all good? All right. Uh, roll call, please. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Shira. Yes. Councillor Kleinman. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, it's proven second reading. 19105, an ordinance to rezone five parcels from general industrial to office industrial. Two, Made by Councillor Klein. Seconded by okay. Councillor Shara. Uh, any discussion on second reading? Uh, roll call, please. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Okay, approved on second reading. Finally, 19110, ordinance relative to bus stops on Bridge Street. Motion to approve. Uh, made by Councillor Klein. We're second. Sec second by Councillor Dwight. Any discussion on this one? Councillor Nash. Um, first of all, I, last time there was a lot of thank yous to me for the work here. I want to thank DPW for all the work that they put in on this, and um, it, it, it was super helpful. Um, the other thing I wanted to add is that Councillor Dwight last time inquired about a pad being, right, and that um, that that was indeed part of discussions at the TPC, and um, that that in discussions between. DPW in the PVTA, there was an agreement on the pad, and per the documents that I saw, it looks like the PVTA has agreed to put the pad in, but it's not clear. That, I, I handed that off to DPW. I, that's for the administrative side. To figure pad out. is a platform but where people stand? Is well, the idea is that the bus, when it stops, uh, that there be a, a spot for people to step off onto something, uh, onto um, you know a sidewalk or some sort of pavement, yeah. especially for people who are using wheelchairs, mm -hmm. that um, that that a ramp be able to go down and they can get off the bus e easily, and um, so that's. 
that's why you want a pad. Got it. Great. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion on this ordinance? On second reading. All right. Hearing none. Let's have a roll call. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. And Councillor Labar. Yes. Is on second reading. Any new business this evening? Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make that. Okay, man. Second. second. Any opposed to adjournment? Not all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good night. Thank you Good. very much. That's all, folks. Yeah.